For about two weeks every four years, presidential nominating conventions completely take over the television airwaves, and they knock our favorite summer reality programs off the air. But what actually goes on inside these conventions? And can we go? Think of the conventions as a giant four-day pep rally. Sure, there's a little bit of official business, but the main goal is to rally the faithful and give each side's candidate a boost of momentum going into the final stretch of the election. So how do you get a ticket? The rules vary from state to state about how to get picked, but you can't just buy a ticket to the big show. It's mostly a mix of devoted party members, local elected officials, donors, and other assorted bigwigs. The first order of business is to adopt the party platform, a mostly ignored guide to what the party's candidates officially stand for during the election cycle. But their main task is to ratify the party's candidates for president and vice president. The big climax is a speech by the presidential candidate himself, a moment designed to inspire voters, promote party unity, and keep the American balloon industry afloat. By tradition, the party that doesn't control the White House goes first. And the choice of host city is just as political as the conventions themselves. This year, both parties chose cities in so-called swing states that are must-wins for anyone looking to capture the Oval Office. The Republicans will throw their party in Tampa, Florida from August 27th to the 30th. Then the Democrats will head to Charlotte, North Carolina a week later. So what do you think? Are political conventions worth the fuss, or are they just a big waste of time? Let us know what you think. Log on to TakePart.com slash Tuesday, subscribe to our YouTube channel, comment on this video right here, right now, and send us a tweet.